Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Ray here and today I'd like to go through all of the Stitch Mania new starts that I made in 2020. This is more of a time capsule for me because I'd like to be able to go back next year and see what I had done and whether I'd made any progress on it in the year leading up to next year. Uh, it's just a fun idea. Feel free to do it yourself if you like. Um, I'm not saying that this is an original idea by any stretch of the imagination, but as I'm putting these projects away uh, to be started up again later on, I just wanted to kind of have something to look back on. So the first new start, this is my first ever Stitch Mania. Uh, the first time I've ever participated. I did not start 20 projects for the year 2020, but I did start 15. So that's not too bad in my opinion. The first kit that I started with is a Dimensions kit. This I purchased from the Michaels.com website and it's called Baby Drawers Quilt. It is a stamped cross stitch, so it has the print actually on the quilt you can see it here in the blue um, and I managed to get a little bit done this is my my mania was a little bit different in that I only worked on the one project for one day and then I would I told myself I'd put it away uh, so in this case I started with the eyes. I got many of the eyes and noses done in this running uh, long stitch and then I came into this bear and I just did as much as I could in one color. At first I was slipping it between the two layers of the quilting but then I decided that I would put on my own backing so I started to not worry too much about hiding my stitches. Um, and so this is my first time ever working on a stamped quilt. And I must say that it is a totally different experience than regular cross stitching. Obviously the X's are much bigger. Uh, so you're, you're changing or, you know, adding more floss uh, quite often. But I think that it's going to be really pretty when it's finished. It's just going to take me a lot longer to do than I originally thought I would. Also the thread is here on these long holders. I think, oh, I did not open it that way originally. I opened it from the bottom. Um, so I just cut it open here. It's on these thread organizers, which uh, I can potentially see becoming a, a little bit of an issue at some stage, but for right now, that's not a problem for me. Um, originally I was going to have this done for my little sis because she's due, but unfortunately it doesn't look like this is going to be that project. Um, I did knit her a few blankets though, so I think she'll like that. But um, in general, I would recommend this. Just make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to do it. Maybe if you know someone who's trying to conceive or if you yourself are trying to conceive, get started right away because it's a little bit more, It's a, it, there's a lot more meat to it than I thought. So that was my first mania start. And as I'm, as I am, uh, you know, putting these away, I just wanted to give you a little rundown. This might take a little longer than I thought. Okay, the second project that I started was this cherry blossom tree by Natalie Stitches on Etsy. I started this on Vintage Violets by The Crafty Kitten. You can see I started the trunk of the tree. That's as far as I got on that first day, and then I just put it away. I have substituted my own uh, colors for this pattern. Since I didn't have all the called for DMC, I chose the next best ones using a really cool website called, what was it? Um, I'll link it down below but if you don't have all the correct DMC for a project then you may want to to use that website it really helped me next up was the Chinese zodiac cell this is from the frosted pumpkin stitchery oh this I love this fabric um, I'm going to have to get started on this again I think it goes this way actually 
um, because my needle minder is at the top. I do need to, to secure the edges because obviously they're fraying a little bit. This, this project is just going to be lovely, uh, once complete, but I'm not under any time, pr time pressure with this SAL, so I'm not forcing myself to keep up with it necessarily, but it does look really cute and really pretty, and I want to bring it back out eventually, especially since it's in this lovely bag. Um, but yes, uh, I have all the floss for that as well, so I can, I can finish it whenever I am ready. So that was the first weekend of Stitch Mania. My next project was my Mirabilia. Let's see if I can pull this out for you. This is Miss Cherry Blossom. She is gorgeous, isn't she? Now I wanted to get started on this pattern because it is, it has been on my wish list for quite some time. So this is my very small start. I did only work on this for one day, so that was quite a bit of progress for me anyway. Stitching on linen, that was a first <laughs> uh, for, for a project this big and this meaningful to me. And I'm really looking forward to working more on this as time goes on. She is one of my, my uh, main focus pieces, and I absolutely love the fabric that she's stitched on. If you're interested in any of these things, please check out my Link Haven, which will be down below, where I give details on what I'm using for what projects. Um, if, it is, if it is just a mania start, I may not have all the details, but if I mention a store, that will definitely be linked in that place. Next up was Grazing Sheep by Doreen Jones. This was uh, only in the World of Cross Stitching magazine. And I got, <laughs> I managed to finish one sheep, which is quite, a, quite an accomplishment. There's a lot of color changing in there. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And this, again, this linen is just beautiful. I'm glad that I tried a few um, linen and even weave pieces this Stiat or Stiatch, excuse me, that's up next, in this uh, mania because it's kind of broadened my horizons and made me try new things. If you're interested in these bags, by the way, I did get them at like a, kind of like a dollar store uh, in Ireland. I'm sure that you can find them on Amazon. They're just these beautiful wallets. Uh, next up, now I have, I have worked on this since, but this is my Stiatch Alone project from stiatch.com we're stitching house and it's called bless this house but i am only doing the face of hugh laurie this is on ember by crafty kitten 28 count lugana and i must say it's pretty funky i think that he gets lost a little bit but um i did make a pretty big mistake in the last pattern drop so i have put it away for now uh but we we shall see <laughs> we shall see Jesse, my team captain, wants me to, to continue. It is free, so you can feel free to join us as well. Okay, so that was the second weekend of May. We were really lucky, and we had a lot of days to work on projects in May. Next up was the Bellflower by Bothy Threads. This is a kit that I got from... I want to say Lakeside Needlecraft or something. I just started, so I'll show you the picture on the front. Bear with me. Oops, so you have a point of reference. This is the picture, and this is where I am up at the top corner. I did measure out where to start. I started in the center, counted up and then over so that I knew where to start on this project because I didn't want to start in the middle. I'm sure you could, but I like to start in the upper left whenever possible. So that is Bell Th Flower by Bothy Threads. The, ki the kit comes with the threads and everything. Next up after that, I wanted to try my hand at a more complicated pattern, which I now regret. This is <laughs> Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. And I did start in the upper corner. I think you can see that. But unfortunately, I miscounted on the orange part. So it's wrong and I need to redo that. I, I know that, you know, it's possible to fudge things, but I feel pretty strongly about restarting that portion. It's, it's going to bug me if I don't. 
but I do like it a lot and I did the same thing where I I used my silky thread my metallic uh, floss to go from the center out to the top corner just to make sure that I could do it <laughs> without without any problems in the in the end and then on Sunday I decided to choose a very small pattern let me see if I have I do not have the picture I'm so sorry uh, if I can get it I'll put it on the screen for you but basically it's another small pattern from the world of cross stitching magazine and it is frog and wellies and I got the frog <laughs> one color of the frog. I wanted to use the new DMC pistachio color. It's beautiful. And this is stitched on another Crafty Kitten uh, small, which I believe if I wrote it down, which I should have, Rachel, I did not. I didn't. Aha, here's the thing. It is February 2020 limited edition 28 count Lugana by Crafty Kitten uh, and I'm super excited for that one because it has lots of cool elements in it. So that was the third weekend of May. Okay this is going much faster than I thought now. The next pattern that I worked on was the Kit Riolis um, Unicorn on pre-printed Ada fabric. This I got, I won from a charity auction on Bendy Stitchy's page, Michelle Michelle Garrett, Bendy Stitchy, here on YouTube. And I only got a small start on it as it was my Friday project and Fridays are quite crazy in my house. Um, I did work on a blend and one other single color. Um, the this kit is very complicated i totally underestimated this so if you're interested in a pretty um advanced cross stitching kit definitely check out the realist kits it is beautiful though love it and the needle minder came with the whole set that um that i bid on during the auction. So that was pretty cool. Uh, on Saturday, I decided with my friends, Heika and Jesse, we decided to start the yoga corn sal, hashtag yoga corn sal. This comes from the pattern yoga corns one, oops, sorry, yoga corns one from little room in the attic. It's beautiful. It's so cute. I love it. Um, and that was how far I got in one day, which is pretty good. And I didn't make any mistakes that I can tell. But I'm going to I'm going to actually keep this within reach because I do want to work on it more uh, since it is something that I'm doing with my friends. Uh, so I'll put that to the side with the Mirabilia. But it was it was really fun, even though the back stitching is going to be really painful. It's back stitch heavy. So if you're thinking about join us, joining us, just let us just to let you know that that is a thing. <laughs> that is a thing that can happen. OK, and then the day after that, we were uh, having a bit of a come down. And I decided to start Cheap Heap by Plum Street Samplers. This is so cute. I started this little guy. He's got these really delicate Quaker motifs inside of his coat and to be honest with you it is hard to see I have the called for fabric for once and um, it's oaken I believe it's 32 count and this is the start I made I did miscount by accident and I only have it's really hard to tell and it's wrinkled I'm so sorry but Jesse and I were watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail together on a Zoom chat while I worked on this and I totally miscounted. So I had to frog like two, two sections, but that's okay. Uh, it's totally worth it when you are having fun, right? I do have, I have kitted up this project in the called for uh, specialty flosses because I really just wanted to. Um, these, these, this 
and yoga corns and a few others I intend on framing and hanging in my home and yeah I just wanted it to go all out for it okay and now we're on the last the last stretch <laughs> this is a lot faster than I thought <laughs> um so this is the Mill Hill stocking holiday ornament isn't that cute I love beaded cross stitch. It is so much fun. The red in between the white here is actually just thread. There's no bead there. And I got really confused actually um, while I was working on this. So I had to go back and take off the beads because I thought they were all beads and they weren't. But this was the start that I got on it. And that's not too bad for one night, I don't think. So even though I had to go back and frog probably this these two red sections and then start over, it's still pretty cool. So I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm confident that I could have this finished by Christmas this year and actually put it up on my Christmas tree. Um, it is fun to work on perforated paper, but I totally misjudged the center. I should have counted how many stitches there were and then centered it properly but honestly I did not I've never done one before so uh, you live and you learn right the second project that I did for the last weekend on Saturday I decided to go small and I got the hello little one card from the world of cross stitching magazine this little guy is from Jill Cooper and this is how far I got on that Saturday. That's quite a lot for, for me. I think that was really good progress. I was really enjoying the smalls as well, you guys, because it's nice to have to be so close to a finish in so little time. Uh, most of my projects are quite big. So um, I will need to get some smaller projects in the future just to kind of balance it out. I don't want to have the same problem that I sometimes have with cross stitching. Uh, and so the last, let me just take this all out, flip this over. The last project that I started is my long dog sampler. Thanks to Michael, uh, the Mirabilia from, uh, from Linda. Thank you so much, Linda. And this one is huge. Um, I'm using half a yard of Misty's Nothing with Mrs. Satis Silk in Peacock. And I love this fabric so much. This is my start. So that was what I got done on Sunday, the last day of Mania, and I love the little bird. Now I did go back and forth on this and wondering, you know, should I have inverted the colors as in should I have had the bird be the color, the silk color, or how should I have done it? But I think it's going to be okay. I'm following the pattern the way that it's written. And I am all the way up here in this teeny tiny little bitty house. I think this is going to be brilliant. And I'm looking forward to it so, so much. So yeah. Um, there are certain elements in here that I am scared to do. <laughs> and then there are other elements which I am more than excited. I am so super excited, especially this little guy right here with the top hat. Yeah. In fact, all, all of the little motifs, I mean, the, the longer that you look at this piece, the more little things that I can find in the back stitching. Look at the little fishies, you know. I think you get it. Um, so I'm in love with it and I'm so glad that I was able to start it for Mania. This is another one that's going to stay out and it's going to get worked on regularly, hopefully because, um, because I do love it that much. And also because I have the silk and I've separated the silk out, I put it on a hanger <laughs> so that uh, I can pull off links as I go. But that's it, guys. That that was Stitch Mania for 2020. This is all of it minus one kit that fell down on the floor. Um, I had so much fun, and I'm excited to see where I get to on these projects and whether I finish them before next May. I don't 
think I will, but I'll try to come back to them. And my idea is if I don't, if I don't finish them or uh, before, before next year, I'd like to revisit them next year in the same order on, well, maybe not the exact same day, but you know, we'll see, we'll see how it works. Uh, depending on the year, I suppose, and, and how things go. But I'd like to to come back and at least touch them again and um, and work on them a little bit because I know that it can be it can be a little overwhelming to some and even to me to see so many things started and not finished. But for me, I think that I am a process stitcher, so I enjoy to start things and then I just get distracted and, and move away to the next shiny thing. But it's just about loving it and and enjoying your time. If you're like me, though, and if you have these, you know, started projects, but you have absolutely no intention whatsoever of finishing them, I just want to let you know that there are groups out there, groups of people who are willing to adopt a work in progress to help you finish it because they like to stitch and they don't necessarily need it on their wall to feel that accomplishment. Uh, so they may make an agreement with you to finish the work in progress and send it back to you uh, or to give it some love, to give it some attention. Or if you are feeling like you don't want a project anymore, someone may take that and give it a good home. So if you're looking at your stash or your whip pile and feeling really discouraged, I don't want you to feel that way about your craft. Uh, take care of yourself and take care of your mental health. Reach out to someone and see if they are willing to take on the things that you were unable to. It's perfectly fine. No shame in that game. So guys, that is my 2020 wrap up for Stitch Mania. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and hitting the like button. I always appreciate that. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye!